The jungle is a strange world, full of new challenges and unknown dangers. Now, more than ever, keeping together is crucial. Instinct drives them on in search of food and shelter. From fossil tracks, we know that herds of huge plant-eating dinosaurs once followed in each other's footsteps, much like this. There are endless curiosities along the way. But the hungry babies haven't got time for too many distractions. They've got to head onwards and upwards. They're amazingly sure-footed. They already have a set of climbing gear in miniature. Now, bright green is an ideal camouflage, but they still don't go unnoticed by this cold-blooded reptile predator, a vine snake. no more than 5% of green iguanas will survive their first year. After dark, the babies cool off and slow down. They have to stop for the night. They huddle together to form a creche. Again, the kind of group behavior we'd expect from mammals like ourselves, not reptiles. Their closed eyelids may still mimic open eyes, so they look wide awake and on their guard. The babies have survived their first night in the jungle, and as soon as they warm up, they must move on. The yolk in their stomachs that they have been living off since they hatched has almost gone. They've got to find a meal. Now they're entering the adult world in search of tender shoots and leaves. Encountering older iguanas can be to the baby's advantage. Although the adults play no direct part in parenting, their waste is valuable to their young. By feasting on droppings from their elders, baby green iguanas take in gut bacteria, and this helps kickstart their own ability to digest plants. Some scientists believe that baby dinosaurs once did the same. It could be one reason why prehistoric herbivores traveled in herds. Droppings are the only contribution to parenting that adult iguanas make. But the babies have developed an effective substitute. The security of being one of the gang.
They'll stick with their group for many months until they're larger and less vulnerable. But it will be five years before they look like this. In the mating season, adult males turn brighter orange and wave swollen jowls like flags to signal their desire. Now that early solidarity is long forgotten. It's each male for himself. The biggest males establish territories highest up the tree, from which they nod and wave to catch the eye of passing females. They may not leave their prime perch for six weeks, not even to look for food. Smaller males are forced to make their pitch below their bulky peers but a spirited performance can still attract a female. This female seems interested. Each male has his own unique head-bobbing repertoire. It's thought that dinosaurs had crests and colours too, so did they play this kind of mating game? The female turns her back on the smaller male. She is aiming higher. Like this one at the top of his tree can mate with all the females in his territory. He may entertain as many as 13 in his penthouse pad, but even he can only manage one a day. For a female, mating marks the beginning of another arduous journey, all the way back to her birthplace. By burying her own eggs on the island, she can keep them out of reach of mammal predators. That's if she makes it past the reptile predators that lurk offshore. Crocodiles. And caimans. Perhaps duck diving will help her slip through. Other pregnant females face the same ordeal. This swimmer has been spotted 